Hello and welcome back to today's new video. Now, as we previously discussed in our old video, we had installed Windows 11 to a Proxmox host, and this was actually for some future videos that we'll be covering here, uh, as you'll actually see now. Um, so as many of you may or may not be aware, um, many versions of Windows all have it, but it's gotten worse over the years, especially with the introduction of Windows 11 and all of its little uh, quote unquote features, you get, could say. Um, what we'll actually be doing in today's video is taking a look at WPD, which is a encouraged tool um, if it's a personal computer, but if it's an enterprise machine, I would not recommend that you use this. Um, now, we, we will be going through some demonstration examples and stuff, and in my future videos, I may cover, hey, you know, if you have installed WPD, you may encounter issues with this, but overall, the use of WPD will be to disable the telemetry, the spine, and all that uh, built-in crap with uh, Windows, kind of making it a little bit leaner, uh, not only on your storage, on your RAM, but also on the internet traffic that comes and goes from your system. Now, you can, you know, install firewall rules and make do with what you, um, whatever you want there, but with Windows Update and things changing, these could always change. So, just to give you guys a bit of a demonstration here, the system has been up, let me see, I don't think, it's only been up for an hour or two. Um, okay, yeah, so I don't think we have the uptime command on here, but essentially, just sitting here, this system has gone through many different pings, uh, sending and receiving information, which I find insane. Um, so just for reference here, it, what you're currently seeing is the firewall uh, for this system. And as you can see, we're just, this one like is us. Okay, Digicert, that's fine. But like all of these other things, MSN, Edge, Azure, I'm not sure what application this is. Okay, that doesn't tell me a whole lot. Um, I mean, all this information, and it's trying to connect to whatever local system. I'm not sure what that is. That could be something else. But regardless, at no point should an operating system just sitting here have so many requests. I, like all these traffic manager.net, smart screen, okay, whatever, that's fine. Okay, DNS, but like just sitting here, it's over 500 results. This is insane. So what we're going to do today is we're going to use WPD and we're going to squash this out. So we'll scroll back up here, let it do its thing, and let's go back to our system. First, we're going to go to Microsoft Edge or whatever your preferred browser currently is, doesn't matter. We'll just do WPD.app. From here, you're just going to go ahead, download. Should download here shortly. There we go. And we're going to open the file or the folder it's contained in. Right click it and extract all. And we're going to not click extracted files when complete. I find this just more tedious and redundant. So go ahead, just extract it. And once it's done, we can go ahead and delete this other file here and go in here. Now let's close out of Edge and open WPD. Now, as you can see here, we do have a little shield icon, which, as you see now, is going to indicate that we do require administrative privileges to run this. So if you don't have those, um, one, you probably shouldn't be running on this system. But two, you'll want to get those for this system, for whatever system you're running it's on, essentially. Go ahead, hit yes, minimize that, we'll let it load up. And here we are. So now we have a basic dashboard to start with, it tells us the telemetry settings and the IP address that we could either block, report, or not report, but uh, essentially stop the system from reporting out. So let's go through the tabs here real quick. Under privacy, we can modify the local group policy. From here, we can disable the customer experience improvement telemetry. Essentially, what this does is it reports information about it, applications crashing, how Windows behaves, and it, the general purpose of the experience program, not just with Windows or Microsoft, but with most uh, applications is to sure, yes, improve the application speed, uh, find out where it may fail. Obviously there's a million different system configurations everyone has these days, 
Um, but overall, it it's one of those things that do you need it? You know, it's it's unnecessary essentially at the end of the day. So we can disable for Windows. We can disable Internet Explorer, Windows Messenger, which we don't. I mean, I'm, I don't even know the last person who uses Messenger or Teams, which, yeah, I'm not even sure why Teams is installed on here. I didn't know that personal one, but whatever. Um, we don't care for Cortana. We don't want Cortana to use our location. Uh, Windows error reporting, similar to the customer experience improvement. This is where all your crashes and stuff are going to go, or system acts up in such way, drivers can't be installed, things like that. This gets reported back to Microsoft. We'll go ahead and disable that. Uh, steps recorder, which one's this one about actually? Okay, we don't need that. I didn't even know there, that was there. Uh, inventory collector, information about the system. Uh, don't need that one. Allow diagnostic data, we'll do off. And there we go. So we'll turn that fully off. Uh, handwriting automatic learning, we're not gonna use handwriting. Allow users to enable online speech recognition. We don't use speech recognition, so we can turn this off. Uh, we don't use inking or typing recognition. Support diagnostic tool. Once again, unnecessary. Just disable it. I mean, all of these you can really disable. There's no need for half of this really to be on your system. Um, I don't recommend autofill in general, so we'll go ahead and turn that off. Uh, network prediction. Okay, we don't really need that. Uh, not allowing personalization ads. We're not going to allow Microsoft Search and Bing suggestions or suggest similar pages. Some of these, like right here, the similar pages when a web page can't be found, these ones necessarily aren't spying, but it's more of a quality of life. So if you don't like it suggesting, if you just want it to be a browser, you can also turn these other features off. Uh, connected user experiences in telemetry, no. Diagnostic Hub, no. Device management, wireless application protocol, push medication and routing service. Okay, no need for that. Uh, Windows Media Player Network is sharing. No. Consolidator. Which one's this about? Security permission. Okay, we don't want that. USB CEIP, customer experience. Nope. SQM tasks. Trust pop. Nope, we don't care about that. Proxy. No. Compatibility. Nope. Nope. No. Uh, don't really need. Okay. Nope. So all these we can go ahead and turn off. And then in the advanced section, you can find more advanced features like publishing and user activities, the activity feed, clipboard history. These are usually more if you synchronize information. Uh, they're kind of doing it like how Apple does it, I believe, these days, where, you know, you can have one set of files and application settings and synchronize across multiple different Windows systems. Um, once again, I mean, really, if you don't need it, one drive, here you go. If you don't use one drive, you don't want to upload all your crap to your Microsoft account, you can turn this off. Uh, so we'll go ahead, turn both of these off, activity feed. Uh, if you enable this policy setting, all activity types uh, as applicable are allowed to be published in activity feed. Okay, disable cloud sync. Yep. Act clipboard history, stored in memory. Nope, we have no reason to share with clipboard. Uh, nope, we're not going to allow it sync across devices. Uh, we're not doing diagnostic data, so we can turn that off. Okay, don't need that. Antivirus and smart screen, we're going to keep on just for later demonstration. Um, well, it's been it's been a hot take um, over the years of whether or not Windows Defender actually does its job. For now, we're going to keep it on just for demonstration. It, we'll, we'll take care of this in other videos. But um, Now, this one is where you're going to be a little more careful with what you do. So, account information may be needed. If you have no need for the calendar, you know, if you have no apps that you plan on using the calendar, you don't need that. Same thing, call history, camera, all these settings. So, nope, nope. Uh, no reason for an eye tracker device. Don't need location. We don't do messaging. Don't need microphone. We have no motion on here. Don't need access to notifications. We're not making phone calls off this device. We don't have any radios built in. 
Uh, we have nothing in tasks. We have no trusted devices. No diagnostic information. Um, we'll let this run in the background. Probably going to need that anyways. Uh, we have no unpaired devices because nothing's wireless on here. No voice. No voice. User movements will run in the background. No. App uh, take screenshots of various windows or displays. Absolutely not. And let Windows apps turn off the screenshot border. We'll keep that on. I think that's more of a quality of life thing. That's a little weird, but. Services, connected databases, platform user service. Okay, nope. Sync host. Okay, we don't plan on using mail. If you do use the built-in mail application or maybe the built-in calendar to synchronize with like Google Calendar, for example, you're probably going to want to keep this on, but for this demonstration, we're going to go ahead and take this off. I believe, yep, same thing here. Uh, we'll go ahead and turn this off. User data storage. Okay, we'll keep that on. We'll keep that on. Messaging service. Don't need that. Push notifications. Okay. So we'll keep those three on because those are pretty basic. We'll probably need those. And Windows update. I mean, we, we don't plan on updating the system. Not automatically. I'll get into that in another video. But we'll go ahead and turn off Windows Update. There's no need for it. So I'll keep all that off. Tell entry to diagnostic data off. Okay. We'll keep this off since there's really no need for it. So that slimmed down quite a bit of what we're doing. Go to blocker. We'll use both of these methods just to make sure. Well, it might be important in the list. Hold on. There we go. Oh, okay. So we'll just use the firewall, then that works. We'll go ahead and see here. Tom entry, third party applications. Okay. We'll go ahead and do extra just because I mean we're not going to use Outlook, Bing, Live, any of that stuff on here. We're literally just going to use this as a basic operating system as it should be intended. I mean, really, we, there's no need for half this stuff that's on Windows. So we'll go ahead, turn that on. And then finally, apps. We'll delete this one, delete. We don't use game bar, don't need that. We don't plan on using mail, 365. News, Edge will probably want to keep for now. People, photos, sticky notes. Teams, tips to do. Camera, terminal will probably want to keep, even though it's really just PowerShell. Uh, movies and TV, MSN Weather, we'll keep Paint, Phone Link we don't need, Power Automate we'll keep for later, Quick Assist, Solitaire, I think we need this one to stay on, so we'll keep that, Clock, Maps, Media, we might need Media Player, and we'll keep Notepad, Let's see, we don't need Sound Recorder, Xbox settings can all go, okay. And we'll disable this. App install, I believe we do need though. So go ahead, remove these. And then once you are done configuring WPD as you see fit, go ahead, restart, and everything should be essentially set. Windows, well, yes, you can switch to Linux. It may be a bit harder for you, and that's perfectly understandable. I mean, Linux isn't meant for everyone as much as, I mean, I joke with friends and all that about it. You, it is your choice. But as someone who, you know, goes about their day-to-day -day life, I honestly don't see it fit that Microsoft or any company for that matter. I don't care if it's Google, Microsoft, Facebook. It could be your grandma down the road. No one needs to know what you do with your machine but you. So what we'll go ahead and do is we'll restart this machine. And we'll just restart. There's no need to update. And run remote desktop. So it'll be here a minute. Okay, it's going to update. So. These are most likely updates that were installed in the background while I was sitting here idle. We'll go ahead, let the machine restart, we'll come back to this. Okay, now that we're back, if we log into our system real quick. Oh. We can go take a look and see that many of the apps and the settings that we've changed have essentially taken place. Uh, we'll take a look into the applications and kind of just see what the fingerprint is like as far as the network traffic on the system once you know it decides to load so okay and now that it is up if we go take a look 
some of the applications have disappeared. We no longer have Microsoft Teams. It's a lot more leaner for a system. Let me see if OneDrive still works. Maybe. Shouldn't. Doesn't look like it. You see here. Okay, so that's still there, which we might be able to remove that. But for the most part, a lot of the other items and such that were in the application have been removed. So uh, in turn doing so, this has made your system leaner. It should make it run a little bit faster. Obviously, you won't see it here, but on your actual system, you will. And overall, it should make Windows a little more private for you. I would definitely incorporate this with some additional, you know, uh, firewall rules per se uh, whether you do so through windows defender or on your own system uh whatever it may be let me see here and it looks like it's calmed down just a little bit on our firewall here Let's see here we're not seeing too much it was a little more compact um but a lot of this we probably could slim down we could start blocking things like ms edge.net we probably don't even need but like i said uh, firewall rules incorporating the TDS app and everything in between should definitely help you to or WPD geez uh, it should help you to maintain a more private environment for you to perform your work in so if you do have any any questions or concerns please feel free to leave them down in the comments below um, if you have brought your system I would highly recommend uh, you make a backup before doing so so it doesn't happen you can do so through Windows Update or Windows Recovery. Um, Windows Update maybe will provide you with some additional assistance as well. But overall, uh, Windows Recovery, snapshotting, backups, and overall just understanding what you're doing will help to maintain a not only efficient system, uh, but God forbid anything does happen like it breaks here or a drive does fail, it would help you in the future to restore that system. So. If you guys have any questions, concerns, please feel free to leave them in the comments below, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one.